evening. This is the Port River School Building Committee. It's Wednesday, November 18th. Um, no, it's not. No. <laughs> November 7th, 2018. Uh, and we are in the police station uh, uh, community room. Um, and this is being recorded by Amherst Media. Uh, so first item is a call to order, which I have done, sort of. Um, next is approving of minutes from previous minutes. I've already had some emails, so I know that got some corrections to make, but very good if folks could go through them. Um, I will pass the, I've actually already passed them on to, to Laura, uh, but I, there might be others. So we had the 1010 and the 1024 uh, to re-review tonight. Um, I'll start with the 1010s for other things that didn't get corrected. Heather? Yeah, so the last thing I suggest is <coughs> that we attach um, the email that's already been posted on the website um, along with the SKP's um, response to it. Um, and, and so that didn't look like it happened in the draft that we're reviewing now for approval. And the reason I feel it's important that we attach them and also add language to the minutes that explain that we, as a committee, still have not reviewed these. Um, and the reason I feel that's important is because the very first thing that this thing talks about is about social isolation of the sixth grade of the sixth graders in one of the schemes and the proposed solution that it talks about in here is locating the special education programming in that socially isolated space and this has been very offensive to the special education community um, if anything we've been working for the last hundred years on is integrating our special needs children and we can't have this posted without context about that it was never discussed, never approved, and that it is not something I assume when we talk about it would be endorsed by this committee. So we need to contextualize this thing. And I would appreciate if that, if the meeting with minutes reflected that. Okay. Other comments on the 1010? And I, I guess I would ask we should. It's, it's just like the, just like the drawings are, are typically state and stamp draft. Um, that's not technically a draft, but we could stamp them unreviewed since we haven't reviewed those. We should probably also write, if we haven't already, unreviewed or draft on um, the building reports because I don't know if they came through that way too. I don't know technically how we apply um, stamps after the fact. But so minutes and agendas. Yep. There's really only one file for one minute for agenda for each. I think they can be replaced, but they they're not. There's no special marking. All all other documents. You can, you can make a loop on the Yeah, minutes and agendas have their own module though, and they have to be one file for. Okay. And they go in a separate repository. It's not the same repository. They go to a separate folder. Yeah. Yeah. But everything else you can contextualize. But we'll mark correct something you can replace. Actually, I don't, I don't think they're probably up yet because we haven't. Um, I didn't see them this morning. The, I, I put the 1010 updated minutes up, okay. um, but I did not put the 1024 up tonight. But okay. The 1010 had been, it's been a, a month now, so I put the 1010 up. Okay, we can replace that. You can replace them every time. Okay. Other things to change the 1010 minutes? If you would just do it, I have it, but, okay. but I think that way everybody okay. hears it. Either that way, you can just email it around. But. Okay. Um, for the 1010 on page three, um, oh, this was, uh, there was a correction in the 1024, but it wasn't actually the correction. So it's where I commented that the Crocker Farm Library, the Crocker Farm Library is also used for community events, but it's kind of said something about the Fort River Library space. Okay. So it, that's, that was just a, Seats there. Is that 1010 or 1020? That was 1020. 1010. Okay. Um, in the first part of 1024, it talks about that correction, so that's why I have that okay. there. Um, in the 1024, um, on page 5, uh, talking about uh, 1,000 square feet being about a half a it says half a thousand dollars in the change, so it's half a million dollar change, so just too many thousands there. Um, yeah, uh, and then also, 
this is when uh, Jesse was talking about uh, the MSB would be uh, would not have pre-K and it would not know about the district-wide ed special ed programs. Um, so I, I I think that's just that was just a, a, an upstairs. It's that they would obviously know about it, but they that wouldn't be part of the MSBA rubric there. So yeah, so was, they would know about it, and that would be additional. Yeah, you'd have to include that. In yes, yeah. So it, I just didn't want somebody to read this and be like, oh, they're not. So um, also on that page, um, it it talks about whether or not you choose the bigger gym would make the difference as to whether you're following the MSBA. And again, it's just. Um, that wasn't that wasn't going to be the the, the, the difference in the size gym wasn't going to make be the difference between conforming to MSB and not and I think and we'll get to your presentation I think you right. did a great job of explaining the differences there so just want to correct those sure other notes for 1010 or 1024 correct great thanks and we'll get approval so we'll move on. Um, Public comments. Public comment tonight. Um, and so the next item is uh, I'm gonna put my glasses on. <laughs> um, review project progress. Mostly, I just wanted to see if you could okay, just. I know you did via email, but but talk about when the, the budgeting will be back. Because um, it kind of ties into our next meeting. Um, when and how we can schedule that. Whether we can do that before. Uh, meeting with the school committee, or we will just meet with the school committee and, and show them the plans, but not necessarily have the budget data. We we expect to get Austin back prior to the your next committee meeting, the 21st. It'll just be a few days before, so we'll probably have it on the 19th or the 20th. If we have any credit, credit before we present it. Given the number of people that our committee is kind of reduced down to, I'm I'm not confident we will have a quorum on that evening. So I'm almost wondering if we could just do a quick show of hands, and I already have a sense from just the talk uh, before the camera turned on about who will be here and who won't, but if we could just do a quick call, a uh, quick raise of hands on who would be available that evening. Wednesday. On the Wednesday. Okay. So we, we definitely can't do it the Wednesday. Um, I think we should probably send around a, a, you know, a poll or you know, do our usual kind of thing because we don't have Eric, um, and it would be nice, even though Mike's not voting, to, to have him at that as well. Um, and so we will send something out uh, with the hope of finding something maybe Monday or Tuesday of that week. What would it be available? Oh, if it's a, if it's available. I'm just you. wondering if there is yeah. enough time then for us yeah. all to get comfortable with the numbers, because whenever you present costs, it raises lots of questions. Yeah. And uh, it may be wise to, for the school meeting, school committee meeting, not to uh, maybe meet without the numbers. Yes. And I, they, they, I, they invited me to their meeting last this past Monday, and they seemed open to that. Okay. They, they were, there's much curious about where the plans stand yeah. and how we're thinking since they I, I, have some interest in I would be more comfortable if we had the opportunity to discuss it and vet the numbers and then have our consultants go through well, yes. I, I'd rather not present numbers that are not fully vetted, and I don't think they I don't think they would want to see numbers that were not exactly vetted. Um, do folks think that's a, a, a okay way forward uh, with the, the meeting on the twenty seventh? Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with it because I, I, I would really like to understand the numbers before I stand for anyone else. I, um, I think they're going to be asking a lot about the numbers. Um, they seemed more, now, you don't know, people's opinions change, but they seemed more interested to me, my takeaway was, they're more interested in how we were thinking about the public outreach, which is something we're gonna talk about tonight, um, than, than the numbers per se. Now, we can get the numbers and that, that might change, um, but uh, and I kind of forewarned them, because I kind of knew that sometime that week, I worried about the whole thing, the skinny piece, and so. I don't mind reaching out the, through Mike to them and, and confirm that, but. I, I just want to be sure that we know what we're going to be presenting, like what what will be on our agenda if, if we're having a, a joint meeting 
there, I watched the tape, and I, I, it wasn't clear to me that they were going to give us, or uh, uh, we going to have time during that 20, uh, meeting on the 27th. So it might be helpful to know what exactly we're doing at that meeting to, to know. Does it make sense or not? <laughs> right. I, I'm going to propose something, and I'll let other people propose things too. Because I've done a little bit, I've, I've had a couple of days to think about it. Um, not that it makes it good at good ideas but um, you know they have not really seen any of our plans and I think that would be an excellent thing to kind of walk them through through the suite of options that we're going to have sure. the budgets assigned to um, and I know they're interested in, in how we're thinking about doing the outreach piece and and I, I think they're kind of interested to hear from your perspective because you're you're coming coming into the, the building you know we all in town kind of know it in a sense or not know it in a sense but get your you know, sort of out of town uh, take on the character of the building. Sure. Uh, I, mean, I can ask, the trouble is they won't meet again. I'm not sure if, if they're going to meet again before that time to like, give us a formal things they want to talk about. But. Did they give you an estimate of the time that they're going to give us? Or? Uh, they intended, they did not say in words how many minutes we we're going to have. I, I expect that it's going to be the better part of their event. It's not going to be just a short thing because we're going to be convening technically as a joint, as a the two bodies together. Um, Maybe we'll help to know what we want. Yeah, yeah. The, there's yeah. a lot of yeah. material to go through. I yep. mean, you you have lived with these options for a while. They they have not. Right. So. Um, I would think it would be important to bring them up to speed on our thinking so far and have a session of the Q&A with them and then come back at a later date with responses to those questions that we can't answer that night. There may be some supplemental material that we may have to come back with, maybe at that, at that follow-up meeting to have vetted numbers. Yeah. That's, that's my thinking. And I think they meet once a month. So I don't think sure. it's. I don't think it's. I don't feel it's like this place. It's quite not as ours. Yeah. What's, what's the following meeting? I guess is my question. Well, we'll be into oh. December then. But yeah, it should be. Let me look. I'm just make some notes. Okay. Tuesday, November 27th, and then the next one is uh, Tuesday, December 18th. Um, so it's getting, that's getting out there. Uh, we should, we can sort of do the outreach. Um, well, really, the following week. week. But that's also going to be delayed by the fact that we want to vet those numbers. We don't, yes. just as much as we don't want to go before, at least I don't want to go before the public either without numbers we're all comfortable with. Could, is it possible that we could have a joint meeting that's not on their schedule? Possibly. I think they, they'd have to post it, but um, I'm almost thinking since we want to get to yeah. this presentation, that we could maybe pause on this. Yeah. Mike will be here eventually. I think that sort of thing might be okay in kosher since <coughs> it talks about scheduling of meetings to talk about if we lose quorum. Um, so maybe we'll just hold on that topic and, and to it and then uh, kind of turn over to you. So we, we also have uh, a new council that will be seated. That won't happen until early January. December. The December. inauguration is first is December 2nd, I think. Yeah. Um, and we will need to reach out to them to bring them up to speed as well. Again, so they, they will want that information. Yes. They're going to have a lot on their plate. Yeah. I, they're going to need to select their chairman, decide their rules, decide their subcommittees, their there's, there's also spent people groups that they have to reappoint. I think yeah. I'm not going to pretend to fully understand the, the the requirements they have to go through. But, yeah. So we may have time. For, <laughs> right, for that. but that would happen, I guess, in January sometime. Okay. Okay. 
I, I think it's important for this committee to get comfortable with the numbers, for the school committee to get comfortable with the numbers um, first. Uh, we can have public outreach and public meetings and presentations, again, explaining the process and getting input from, from the public, answering questions if we can, or having follow-up meetings. Um, and this can be done in any public forum, any public meeting that you want to schedule at the school.
current distribution of spaces, yes. Yes. or even compare, maybe in one show the three buildings, so then you can, on a snapshot, they can be reminded and look at the differences, because the people that know, why would yeah. they gonna find the differences? I, I agree, I think, I think showing all three schools so that they have some context, uh, yeah. some context would be very helpful. I'm not sure how members of the school committee get familiar with the buildings. Do they do tours? I, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I don't want to answer for them. It'd be a good question for Mike if, if he's able to come later. Um, I certainly think they do. Um, it's, you know, in the end, it's, there's only five buildings in, in the district, really. Um, so I think they do have some sense. They've certainly been in, we've met, we've met there. I'm sure they've all been through there one, one time or other. But they don't necessarily know them in depth. I mean, and at the beginning of the year, Jim had a very in-depth presentation. That's to on true. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't understand the context of the full context of the conversation, but they I, it was either before yeah. they had me on or after they had me on. There was some talk about it was, some. It was the beginning of the year, I, I watched. I yeah. watched it. He went on at some length about every every and, space and, and, and yeah. how it was because because they had the discussion about. MSDA process and how privatizing which school to request. So they, they had all that in the lead is, up. Is that presentation up online somewhere? Um, yeah, I can find the I can find the date for you. Yeah, could, if you could, that would be great because I'd like to get familiar when they were already shown. Show, yeah. And maybe select from that and say, if you remember this, here's what we saw when we visited the schools. Right. Just to let you guys know that, that there has been a lot of discussion lately about both custodial work in the buildings, deferred maintenance, and long-term goals. So they're look, they are, they're very cognizant okay. of the issues. And they're looking at it in that kind of, in that there is three short ways that we need to look at this. Yeah, three, so three. I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to. Sell. Sell. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. But I, at the same time, it doesn't hurt to have the bullet list that kind of reminds them of what effect, what the particular issues are in this school. Better. I think the pictures actually, I mean, if you go through just as fast as you did, like, yeah. you can absorb pictures fast, and yeah. it is more, I don't know, I think it's worth a thousand words. I think it's helpful, and you went through it super fast, and yeah. I don't know how many more seconds you need to shave off, but it could just be just as fast as you did like it, that, and, you know, yeah. and you've already got the pictures, and. Maybe, maybe we front it with a bullet point list. Of, yeah, I mean, a bunch of items. Do you, do you have a sure. preferred length of time? I mean, I thought the other way to do this is for me to say, uh, the architects think they can speak for half an hour. And, and, you know. Yeah, half an hour is easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I can make it harder. It's not for two hours. But yeah. No, I can consume it half an hour. Less time it becomes harder. Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's like, a rush. But if yeah. half hour feels about right to kind of make it through some sort of version of this, that's what the second communicate. Yes. Let me know that, yes. Shall I continue? Uh, the next section, if we're thinking of it in sections, would be to talk about the programming effort that we've done. So I brought a picture of the um, ed educational program that the district provided. Um, switch that fast. And then uh, this is a slide from our interview talking about program being very important to where we end up, that depending on the program for just three different schools, you can see the building footprints took very different shapes. And just that maybe that's how it should lead off and then talk about that we've written a program, or you've written a program and given it to us. And then I um, summarized our very complicated MSBA spreadsheet into just a room list, um, trying to focus in on these are the spaces that we understand you need not get too caught up at this point with the square footage, but gain some credibility that we're providing these spaces for the, for the school. Um, that other spreadsheet just is way too much um, information. And then we could probably spend half an hour just describing that, you know, that to people who haven't sat through the meetings. Yeah, so yeah. So maybe just the room list and not, de not too much detail. It's, it's similar to the existing rooms. Talking about it's for a larger population of 420, maybe all you really need to say here. Um, and then talking about the building size um, as driven by the program. Um, this gets a little more involved, but I'm hoping you can you can make your way through that the proposed is the third column. Um, 
as you know, it's 83, 695 is what we've been proposing for 420 students. So it's a 1.5 grossing factor. Um, and then we're over MSBA guideline and we're over Crocker Farm. And so then below, it just explains, and probably the graphics could be more clear here, but the idea is there um, that our difference to Crocker Farm is due to um, the district special education programs and the larger gym. Our difference to MSB, MSBA guidelines is due to the classrooms primarily, also the district special ed programs, and the, to a certain extent the administration for pre-K. Um, and so if you were to add those things into the Crocker Farm or into MSBA guidelines, you'd be very close to where we are with the proposed Fort River. I'm just trying to explain why it's a little bit bigger. Just a couple of questions out here. Well, Jesse, forgive me, but I never caught before that there was a zero next to the assistant principal's office. We do have an assistant principal. I didn't notice that either. Yeah. Are, you, are you going back to this page? I'm um, the one that's yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. there it is. Nice little zero. <laughs> it's in the second column about midway. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that should be a one. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Just pitch. making sure I didn't miss it somewhere in the previous document. The only other thing, too, is we did get voted um, through the dual language program this week. So I don't know if that changes things because by my math, if we have seven grade levels and if we have full capacity of like 20 students per grade level, that's 60 per grade level, seven grades, we are looking at 420. Are we, are we already targeting for 420? For, for but that's plus, without preschool. Plus preschool. Oh. Yeah, but um, my, you wouldn't have 20 in kindergarten, right? Yeah. It would. Yeah, because that's where that's where it starts next 20, year. Twenty times three. three sections. Yeah. I don't know. I have to go back to how you gave us four twenty at the beginning. Um, I think you had um, it was three seventy five plus forty five, um, and the three seventy five you said by seven. Seven. I don't know. I have to I have to build up to that number again. I'm uh, forgetting that. As far as I remember, was Mike saying that. Classroom sizes are usually smaller and less than 20, so that's why he gave the number of 18 or 19 per classroom. Not 20. My, I think my kindergarten teachers would love to hear that, but right now they're teaching classes of 2021. 20, that was what Mike said in yeah. the meeting when we had the first meeting and we had programming. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike seems to be fairly confident because yes. the thing they did before they listened to me, or almost the thing they did before they listened to me on Monday. Was, was to vote that through, and, and Mike seemed pretty confident on that number, so I, it doesn't hurt. I think we should go back and check it, certainly before that. Yeah, but what Aaron has said reminds me, we were working with 18 per class. That's, that's, that's three, so 18 times three per class, right. times seven, I guess 378. That's, that's what, plus the three, if we can you count the 18, I think we'll have a very happy staff. But. Okay. but the question, I was gonna ask this question based on the vote, whether which spaces should be adjusted if they have 20 per classroom. Probably the other one is the library and the cafeteria would be the spaces or the classrooms as well. The, yeah, yeah, since you increase totally the classrooms, cafeteria possibly. Uh, I'm not going to show the library would have to be adjusted. So that, that was what I was going to bring up that question which are the spaces if the How library, much flex is there? Yeah, how much flexibility do we have all these sizes of things based on changing enrollments between 18 and 20 and 21? Whether you have 18 or 20 pupils in the classroom isn't really going to change the size of the classroom. Okay. okay, so that was one of the questions. Is there any other space in the building that would have to be changed? I, I don't believe there will be, other than possibly the dining room cafeteria. Okay. You could go to multiple waves. Okay. So, I mean, we're planning on two, you could go to three. That, that's the fit them in the cafeteria. I guess what I would say is it would be a comment. Oh, just that we should, if, if we do need to reconcile yes. the 20 and the 420, you know, 20 per classroom that we are advertising in the school set of the actual caps that we have. Right. And so what I would say is go, ask you to go back and, and talk to Mike sure. um, uh, and make sure that just figure out what it should be. <laughs> I don't yeah, think there's any question that we want to accommodate the, the new language. That, that was part of the, part of the, the whole continuing this. Other questions or should I let you go on? That's fine. Can you check with the superintendent? Um, 
Can we put Crocker Farm existing up there too, since it kind of okay. reinforces that we're not really it's for comparison only time. Okay. We can add that. We'll work on the graphic here a little bit. Um, but. Okay. Uh, I just okay. Wanted, I wanted to add one thing on this page, and I think you're on to this already, but this seems like a pretty important page, and I do think yeah. that um, information, like refining the graphic would be important yeah. for the presentation. Yeah, I think, really I think we'll, we'll lose people right now, but if we straighten up the columns and you see yeah. color for the bottom part. Uh, maybe do an animation at the bottom part, so present the first one, and then add the second information. Oh, in steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. steps. That's fine. Idea. We had talked about um, Wildwood as well. Does, would adding that uh, give any more information to this slide? Would that be helpful? Yes, because if I were on the committee, I'd say, well, have you looked at Wildwood? How does that compare? Yeah. Also, because it's the same footprint, but it has for 20 students right now. Suggesting earlier that, that we show all three schools, so it, yeah. it would be a little logical progression there. Okay. Questions about that? Sometimes showing floor plans is a sensitive thing for security oh. reasons. And sometimes <coughs> districts have told us don't show them. I, I mean, these, these, these presentations end up yeah. on some website. Typically. Yeah. Anyone can view this any day of the week. So, I think that um, that ship has sailed. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, it's <laughs> true. I am too. Yeah. yeah. So what I was told when I bought, I borrowed one time the blueprint from Wildwood, yeah. it was that it didn't have student information. I think it had only the names of the teachers. I think. But and it, and it wasn't yeah. even just was, you. I mean, the, yeah. the floor plans of that's the true. Yeah, have been out there for years now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think I, I I like to think Eric or Mike would have you know. I found it. I only say that because it was just only one night ago that oh, someone here. said that to me. That's okay. Why don't you pull that out of the slide? Okay. That's me. Presentation, but <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> Maybe you draw it on the whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, shadow puppets or something. Make your own we have, we have recorded. So. Oh, you're recording to them out. Do an absolute. Continuing it. Um, and then we just wanted to touch on the town's net zero requirement, which is also part of our study for new construction. Never mind that that exists, seems to be a important part of the project as well. Then we would dive into the conceptual design studies. Now, I've left these um, pretty much identical to what you previously saw. I think the only addition is the bottom of this slide where it says estimated project cost range TBD and estimated MSBA share TBD. Um, and but we don't have those numbers today. And it sounds like we, we won't have them for the school committee as well. So we just remove those. Um, but at some point, we'll bring that information into the discussion. Um, Jesse, can I just suggest one change on this, where it says percent new construction slash net zero. It kind of implies a proportion. It's really new construction, which will be net zero. So I don't know if that, if it, you just, know, it's kind of like it's 50% of the new construction is going to be net, or, you know, it. We could just remove the net zero, I yeah. think. And then we could yeah. remind them that, as yeah, you know, just so it, does, it yeah. just looks a little confusing. Sure, sure. Or parenthetically. Yeah, yeah. 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 and if it's within parentheses, it makes it more sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's clear why you're yeah, it's not, you know, why it's not a that out. It's, yeah. it's, it's that's what yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that. And while we won't have the cost information to share, it would be good to, to just at some point touch on what's going to be in there. It's, so it is going to include things like, you know, uh, phasing the project or having to have rental classrooms, you know, so that they know that it's, that it, it will, at the level of feasibility study, it will be inclusive of, of what it's inclusive of. And we do 
Okay. Yeah. Sort of yeah, sort, sort, yes, sort of an outline of the components of a as estimate shows that it's hard cost, innovation cost, new construction, phasing costs, abatement costs, right. demolition costs, site cost, and soft cost for engine equipment. All of those will be fleshed out. And a lot of times it we're that they're getting confused between construction costs and total project costs. Right. So that Exactly. So we'll come to a total, we'll call it construction cost, all the soft cost, the typical components, the total project cost, and I will emphasize what the difference is unless I'm confused. Yes. If, if this is the, the, what we're going to be presenting without the number, then obviously we can just get rid of those two boxes for now. Right. Yeah. I have one other question about um, presenting numbers, and, and we're far ahead because you don't have the estimates yet, but will you present them as a square footage cost, as well, cost per square foot as well? Yes, we'll do both. Yeah, because I know that like, if I were watching this presentation, that would be the first question, you know, one of the first questions I'd ask. Yeah, that would be great, thanks. No, I think we'll probably present to you a rather large matrix because there's a lot of options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulling it down to what you want to project out. I would switch. I don't know why you put the classroom recycling daylight at the bottom. I think it would be is on the same category of gymnasium science and pre-K program. Okay. Um, just the grouping, the facing, I think, is part of programs. Yeah, those are qualities of the building. Yes, it's a quality of the building. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, we haven't really got into a discussion about how do you rank them, or what qualities do you identify in, in ranking these, these options? Uh, I can I can take a stab at it. I think even if we're not applying them yet, but I think it would be good to I think it's a good thing to think about and talk yep. about. And, and, and you know, since we aren't going to be narrowing the search or the grouping too small, um, I think to be able to put some quantitative and qualitative. Characteristics do things eventually. Right. Cost is only one factor. Yes. Construction duration is another factor. That's true. Okay. I think, I don't know if you've talked to the school committee, but to remind them about what's the product of this, that this is not P10 construction plan. No, they're, this they're is well the aware of that. Flexibility, <laughs> yes. this is ideas. And uh, multiple options. I think it has to be maybe, but since not a, if somebody goes to this meeting, they might not be aware of this. Maybe you're doing an introduction regarding this. They, they, they have expressed on their own a concern. Not that I don't think I don't believe they think we don't know this. I think they're a little bit worried that the public still might mm -hmm. attach a project, mm -hmm. an actual built project, to our activities, and so they are encouraging encouraging us and encouraging themselves to remind people that this is a feasibility study only process. Maria. Um, I had another idea about, you know, that came up with the classroom tree seat daylight. There is, a, we talked about this before, there are a list, there's a list of non-negotiable items which apply to all of the options that we can present. And maybe it would make more sense to just do, I mean, just to list them, like everything that we're giving you, aside from the code repair, are go is going to have natural light in all classrooms, good air quality, ventilation, circulation, good acoustics, you know, all the concerns. So that was just like, all of that's taken, all that we do gives you that. So there's not one of these options that gives you some and others that you don't. Right. So that's what you want to be able to compare them apples to apples. Yeah. But I think it, that I think literally putting that slide there that says everything we do will have these items. I can, sorry. No, no, you're fine. You know. Except for option F. Yeah, yeah, but maybe painting is a different color. Or in a different or, slide altogether. I mean, yeah. this, this, this criteria matches the Ed plan, which everything needs the Ed plan except for option F. So maybe that list of what our non-negotiables are, it's really the educational plan. Does that make sense to move that to the programming section and talk about those are the requirements of the project? Um, I think that might be a better slide anyway because we, um, I was going to comment on the use of that, that photo. We didn't actually generate a brand new educational plan and sure. you don't want to like show the, the 
plan for the previous project, because that's just going to confuse people. So maybe to just say, like, the plan is we're going to give you options that do all of these things. It's like a summary of those okay. goals. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In addition to the big three, I listed just also meeting energy code. Yeah, yeah I have a fuller yeah. list. Do you want to read them off? Natural light in all classrooms, good air quality, ventilation, circulation, good acoustics, elimination of both of the classroom design, compliance with net zero bylaw, and green initiatives, flexibility in case of enrollment change in the future, adequate space, space for programming needs, cost and environmental analysis that includes construction, demolition, demolition, swing space, maintenance, usage. So it's just like everybody gets all of these. <laughs> and there are other things people are just too fast. No. What's that? Forward that to me, please. Yes. I just from a little bit of, of catch up. For I'm Mike. sorry. That's all right. Not a problem. Uh, so we're we're working our way through there, um, have a first pass of the presentation for the school committee. Right. Um, we won't have cost numbers uh, available at that point, but we'll present where we are, and then once we've had a chance to absorb the cost numbers, we'll probably have to another joint meeting. So is the plan to go ahead on the 27th? I I, I think so. I, I think so. It's better to. I, mean, I don't think we've. Yeah, I don't think anyone's sort kind of expressed a reason not to go forward, okay. but it's just a slightly di it's a slightly different uh, set of data we'll be sharing. We won't have that cost data, but I think there's enough here that this it's almost like, better. In fact, we were talking about yeah. having a half hour presentation. It has a lot of material to go through. Yeah. Half hour feel right to you? I might suggest that the school committee may push you to be a little more brief and have more time for a question and answer. Okay. In general, they're they're. They push me and the staff to try to keep things as best we can to about 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and then leave time for dialogue. Because if they, the challenge is if it goes to 30 minutes or 30 minutes, and I'm making up, you know, these numbers are all arbitrary, but if it goes on too long, then by the time the dialogue is done, it's been an hour, hour and a half, and then they've got other agenda okay. items to do. So. That, that's fair enough. Yeah. I mean, we can target 20 minutes and then say we'll answer whatever questions we want. Right, because it's generally presentations and questions that they take about equal amounts of time at our school committee. So if the presentation is 20, you can assume at least 20 minutes of dialogue, right. and I think that's what they would love to have. Okay. But I'm not a school member, so I'm cautious to say it, but, but I think that's been my experience in a variety of topics. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of options and a lot of sketches, but to more quickly summarize, we to point out that we're pursuing a a range from full new construction to a co-repair at the, at the bottom end, and a lot of different scenarios with addition and renovation in between. Um, and so then, uh, I'm not sure this would follow here. I think I would jump into that range and um, present the new construction option, um, talk in, in general, I suppose, about um, the layout of public, academic, and administration space, not diving too much into the floor plans, which is schematic. Yes? I have a suggestion. Maybe I would start maybe by the 3D views. Yeah. Um, I would start by the 3D views and then go or include the 3D view next to the floor plan, because we've yeah. been seeing it, but I think volumetric, it's here at snapshot saying okay this is a new building this is an addition new site this is an addition site but maybe you have in one page the six versions originally and they will go through okay we have the six in the that matrix i mean i can put the 3d views as opposed to the floor plans i think the floor plans actually are reading more clearly if i think the 3d views right okay. now at that size yeah but maybe go and one yeah, more what slide. I think I hear Runa saying is that have you can put the the three D views. I mean, it's repetitive, but put three D views in with in the floor plans, yeah. Yeah. and so that you're kind of associating them in your head. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, you know, I think I think if you saw that that all new school, okay, I, I know what's coming. It's going to be a, a all new school. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even if you remove it, maybe you're micromanaging. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, if you remove the lines of the cost, then you can put the, the, the 3D on the bottom. Yeah. We could try it. I think they'll be a little small there, but we'll take a look. 
but considering it's quite all of this and it's uh, something so that you can see it maybe. What I'm hearing is incorporate the 3D imagery into the individual descriptions. Yes. Yeah. And then the site plan follows. We may have to switch the order as well. Maybe the site plan. Here again, I just the site plan is being incorporated in the edition option. They are. Okay. But I, I think we'll probably lead off with the site plan. Lead off with the site plan. There are, but I think I think this third one is the one that um, we could go with. I, what do you think? Which one do you want? I, I think it would be better just to boil it down to one. Yeah, I mean, for, really for a feasibility study, do we really yeah. need to have three? I mean, I don't think you do. One enough? <laughs> one, one, yeah. I think one is enough. One is enough. And, I, and, the, and the north south orientation, or the correct solar orientation, yeah. would be my preference. I, I, would, I would agree yeah. with that. And I think you could say, and we think you could fit it a couple of other ways. We could just say that. Right. Yeah. Especially if we're hitting 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, I have to play timekeeper a little bit. Um, we do have a couple invoices I would love to approve before using Diane. Um, yeah. Do you think you could so finish this by? We'll work on the options. Right. Right. We did this a lot. We've got a couple minutes to spare. That's the majority of the presentation. We'll be reworking the options section so that it can be concise and more legible. We had added these 3D views um, this week. You haven't seen them before, but they're. Uh, I'm thinking about this one, option C, something that's a one floor addition. You're right, it's, it's incorrect. We shall okay. bring it down. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. Um, and the UNF. But they, they have a nice pair. I think we'll probably color the new construction differently than the roof. It's sort of blending yeah. in right now. Color be friendly and um, yeah, by hand. Bring the camera up a little. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just help us more. I think the blue is the major. That's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it's a draft, um, yeah. but this is our content so far. I think it's. Probably it's helpful to realize what content we want to add, if anything. I mean, we've already mentioned some items. Okay. Can you go back to the population? Yes. Now that we have Mike. Now that we have Mike in the room. Sure. So we want to make sure that, that they, they've targeted the right population with, um, with the language. And I'm actually going to let them tell you what the number is. If I say it, I'll get it wrong. <laughs> um, and make sure that that's the right number of kids for classroom. Sure, we have um, 375 K through 6 students, and then we have 45 pre-K, bringing the total to 420. So I think it's going to be a little larger than that, based given the school committee vote. So I'm just let me do the math. So seven grade levels, three classes at grade level. So that should be 21 classrooms. Day in a little bit to check my math. Not that anyone can do the, the literal math, of it, but just that my thinking is is accurate. I went with 20 students per class times three. Yes. 60 times seven is 420. I'm in the same place as where Diane is. Is the reason why from 18 to 20 students? Because last time we had done it, it was the same math, but 18 students per classroom, which was the maximum for the. Um, so our average right now is about 19.5. Okay. The district. Um, I think it's hard to know exactly how many students would be in a classroom. I mean, I'm thinking about it from a classroom number of classrooms perspective more than students. And I know we have to think about both, but because one is going to be pretty fixed in this model, the number of students that are actually in the classroom is going to vary a little bit here to here. Sure, yeah. but let's talk about the average. Yeah. What's the average number per grade per classroom, and how do you get to that? Number? 19.5 is the average per class right now in our schools, and I would imagine that I wouldn't expect that to change soon. So let's do the right math one more time. 19.5 uh, per classroom, three classrooms per grade, times seven grades. What's that look like? It's going to be 420 for K through six. If you round the 19.5 to 20. 
And so when you add the pre-K to that, this there you go. Are you going to plan to put a cap on the number of students that are for the dual language, so you're saying average is 19.5, but I'm like pressure would be that it's going to be very popular in the district, and you're going to have to say no. So, um, are you going to put a cap on the number of students at the classroom at 20, or is it going to be high? Because by, I think by lowering your kind of average classroom, so, unless you should traditionally doesn't do it. Are you like, yeah. Um, so, I think we're planning to start with a two dual language classroom class size of 20. Um, you know, so, Yield, you know, over seven years, it's hard to predict. But from other districts, you know, some students move because they just move, and then other students come in. And if there was a dual language program for those students who come in later who are bilingual or Spanish speaking, can be a good fit. Monolingual English speakers in fourth grade is not eventually appropriate fit. Um, so we'll have to see how the yield goes over time. But we're trying to use what other districts have done. The, um, actually, the monolingual English class will start smaller, but we, based on other districts' experience, it grows because kids who come to the district don't necessarily have the opportunity based on their language <coughs> skill to join later. So um, there is a mismatch in the kindergarten, but what people tell us is over time they've aligned in terms of class size. <coughs> Do you have a class size policy for the district? We have a policy that has, offers guidelines, but it's not. Some districts I know have, and some states, Massachusetts doesn't have that many with this, have a policy with literally the 20x, 25th kid comes and you need to start a new section. We have guidelines that are include targets. Um, and I can send that to the committee. It's, it's on our website, but I can send that link. But our targets all exceed 20. Right. Yeah, even at the kindergarten level. I think it goes 20, 21. 21, thank you. And we have had kindergarten classes that are higher than 21 in the past. Um, but I can send it just so these can have that content. That'd be great. Yeah. Do you need more to <coughs> I always need more. I always have to like rethink it and redo it. And then, if you don't mind, what I would like to do is create a spreadsheet Please. that shows these are the grades, these are the classrooms, this is the population per grade, and then send it to you, yeah. and then tell me how to adjust it. Yeah. So I want to make sure the number, which is going to be publicly yes. distributed, is correct. Yeah. So right now, tonight, we believe it's 420 plus 45. Okay. Assuming this we do three for a total of 465. Okay. And I thought I heard you say a minute ago that okay, so there are three grades per three classrooms per grade. Two of those classrooms will be dual language. Okay. One will not. And in the dual language classrooms, you'll have 20 groups. Correct. Okay. Alright, I'll flesh out the rest of the spreadsheet yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anything else we were going to circle? Sorry, I know everyone got the email I sent out about the other decision in the special ed program as well. Is there any clarity that's needed on that? Just that. Okay, thanks. Uh, back to my agenda for a moment. It is now, it's now uh, five of seven. Half the time, it would be good to talk a little bit about what our goals as a group would be for some of these public outreach events. I, I think it's a very good uh, place to, to start with the presentation, and I'm sure part of this will kind of be a basis after we go through the, our meeting the school committee as a basis for kind of presentations to the more general public. To do. Um, but I, this is likely discussed, and I don't want to throw us off the our time history, but just being clear also for the school committee that joined meeting with the goals and that presentation are. presentation are to present, right, because you can go 12 different ways when we're in a joint meeting. I think having, offering both groups real clarity on what the goals are will help the presentation be seen um, appropriately and the question and the answer go, I think, much more smoothly. So uh, I'm not dictating what those are, but I think being clear on what the goals of the presentation are goes a long way to kind of a healthy meeting. Sure. So, no, we can give you some bullet points. Yeah. Presentation, and we're going to have another building committee meeting before we're going to strive very hard to do so. Yes, before we meet with the school committee, so hopefully we can flesh all this out and include that. 
Um, in a nutshell, the goal is really to bring that school committee up to speed on where we are. We're not finished. This is a progress report. Uh, and in the progress report, we'll touch upon the following. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I think if I could yeah. something about that, I think the other thing, if, if you as a designer of the committee is looking for specific feedback from the school committee, I think it's also a big, obviously, you can offer feedback on anything, but I think if there's like, we're presenting this, if we really want feedback from the school committee on X, being explicit about that, um, not to be limiting, but actually, like, if there's an intentional focus or like, given your roles, we really want to know what you think about this thing. Obviously, they can ask about HVAC and they can, you know, if they can offer feedback about that. It's probably not the thing we're looking for school committee. Uh, feedback on it, I think that'll also help focus the conversation out. Whatever it is, again, I'm not trying to dictate the content of those, but just structural. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious if you've heard anything from the building, uh, sorry, the school committee about, gee, I wonder what, what they're doing. <laughs> we did have some dialogue about that um, and Monday night, and I think. So I'll look back at my notes and perhaps even after the meeting I can, I can share uh, my recollection. The video is probably live. I don't know if anyone's seen the video yet of the, the meeting. Uh, I was dealing with multitasking at that time. There was an issue, an infrastructure issue, having nothing to do with the elementary schools at that time. So that was a conversation I was sort of in up and then I was actually taking care of some other business at that time. But um, I'll do a little thinking and, and okay. get back to you. Yeah, so, if there were certain things that you already have heard that you're yeah. curious about, yeah. maybe we should, we should address those. What, what I did share was one of one of the takeaways I had from, from talking to them, right? was was thinking about was they're thinking about how to think about the public outreach events and yeah. what the goals for that are, given that we are presenting these multiple options. We're also not going past the feasibility study. What is that right balance, and how do you present that to get feedback from the community without without some people inadvertently coming away from with the impression that oh we're going to get a building we're not going to get a building. Yet, yeah. uh, this process. Right. So I think that I think that's spot on. I think a lot of the things that Maria read actually are the things that are on their minds as well. I know that they're already answered in some ways in their presentations, but I think that list is something that they're thinking of because they're not of an Eric and myself. They're not deeply in this process, so actually, just that list clarifying all of these options have these things in mind. Yeah. Um, I think that would be an orienting statement. So that not thinking about those things. You're not looking at the buildings. That's another thing that I. Back, not just this past meeting where John was there, but the other previous ones, and I think that would be clarifying for them. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so before we lose Diane, I'd like to get us to look at some choices and do some very practical stuff, and then we can circle back um, and, and talk about more about the public outreach and, and other things. Oh, and, and I can get I can give up an, an update on between Anthony and I. The survey and the geotech. Um, uh, so we have a first invoice from our designers. It landed in my inbox at a strange time when I actually had a minute to read my inbox. Um, I don't know if folks have a question on that uh, or not. Uh, if folks don't have a question on that, I would entertain a motion to forward to payments. Second. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> and we have a second one. Thank you. Uh, from Laura. Uh, for, uh, skills at uh, recording all these minutes where sometimes I mumble. Um, and uh, if folks want to have a question on this one, I'd also take a motion. Okay, so you have a question. I, I do have a question. Okay. Um, Seven hours, uh, and I think the meeting before is about eight. That that seems like a little long, and I'm wondering if there's a technical issue or something we can do to aid. Is it aid the transcription? That seems like it's kind of a long time for. I am not looked back at, at, at what we we're doing before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have the same question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, where do you want to? Take. You say it takes too long. It seems like a long time for. I think the last. Yeah. 
it, it seems like it's a long run. I'm wondering if there's if the, the, something we can do to help if it's a transcription issue or. But uh, I'm just curious. I don't know. It, it actually takes me. It does take me a long time to do it. Something we could add to a future agenda would be: are, are we recording too much detail? You know, right? That that would probably affect that amount of time. So. Uh, like, yeah, I, I can't they, really they, talk they, about they, it tonight. But don't yeah. have all the comments. Well, so I, pass some more detailed ones. So. I think I think it's something we could add to a future agenda about yeah. what what what's the right level for us, and are we getting are we getting enough detail? Are we not getting enough detail? That, that'll impact how long it takes. Okay. Um, those required votes. Uh, so, survey in geotech. I'm going to dive into the geotech one first. Do you want to yeah. so, uh, update? So, with geotech, as we got, I solicited eight firms. We got two responses. As you can see, they were $100 off from each other. Uh, but both are about, are really more than twice what we had hoped to pay for this. Oh, yeah. um, so I have not awarded anything I wanted to discuss with you. I spoke to Jim about this, and I'm going to now relay what Jim said, not my opinion, uh, necessarily. Uh, Jim believes that this is pro work may not even really be necessary. I asked if we could pare down the work. He said it, we may not need to do it at all. He feels pretty comfortable with what we already know about the site, and he doesn't think that we need to do this work. I said they're probably going to want to know why we didn't, why we went out to bid in the first place, and he said because the committee seemed to feel strongly about it, and he didn't feel so strongly against it that he felt the need to say that. So here we are. Um, we could try again with fewer borings. Um, I, I don't know that necessarily all of the ones we're asking for are necessary. Um, we could try again, hoping for more responses, because I think the larger firms didn't, I, I had no response from them at all, not even questions. Um, we could decide we don't need it, and I'd, I'd love to hear some more discussion from the, our architecturally inclined people. And I'll let our architects I, speak I first. Think, yeah. I think you do need it, and um, if we need to submit or go out for, the, for another RFP, I would encourage you to do that. Um, the earth is such in this area that you're kind of borderline, I mean, especially if you're considering a two-story building. If you're considering a two-story building to make it more compact, remember we have this potential flood line that is going to be changing. But if we make it a two-story building and make it compact, you may be talking about piles. And that, that has a, I, that would know, a cost yeah. implicate. And, and, I, and uh, to rule out piles, I want to make sure that we understand I mean, I, I, I'm going to speak for myself and a lot of others chime in. I, I, I agree. Um, we're going to end a feasibility study. That'll be a piece of information for the town. But borings, a survey, are all things that can be, just like you looked at the borings done in 1970-something um, and got some information on it. That's something that, that going forward to another group later that if they pick up on this site, they can use. And so to me, it seems um, like a loss if we don't do it. And, Hearing that we're not, we need to be able to rule in or out something that has a, a significant cost implication. Um, seems important. Maria? So, um, a couple of things. For an MSBA process, it's my understanding that they would want, maybe, I, actually, I, I shouldn't speak out of turn. I don't know if you know they would require something more recent than original construction, right? Um, I would guess that they would, but I, mean, I don't know, I mean, I guess, so there, so I think that's kind of our answer. The, I was a little confused when I saw the, um, the map and the locations of all the, the potential borings, because some are literally adjacent to the river, which we don't need. Um, so, um, so maybe we could ask you to go back to coordinate. We might reduce have the quantity information now. Target the area specifically that mm -hmm. we're looking at for the footprint of the building, a new building. And absolutely, we could do that. We could reduce 
reduce the quantity, and if you want help rewriting the RFP, we'll be happy. Yeah. So we can't do an RFP, uh, what the state of Massachusetts calls an RFP, and I know, I know one of the vendors reached out to you to encourage you to encourage me to resolicit this as an RFP. We can't. We have to we have to do it based on price. Okay. Um, but yes, I, I think Jonathan and, and you, I would love. Yeah, I think we can help. Reduce the scope and refine the scope. Okay, great. So, Allison? Is there, I know when I've worked on projects before that, you know, and this might be different because it's with the state, you know, we've gone out and we've talked to a vendor and then there's a, cost, a price per boring. There's a setup fee and a price per boring. I'm just wondering if we, rather than having to go out again, we could just negotiate down. Um, with the, with the respondents. We can negotiate with the lowest bidder, yes. We yeah. Could, we could try to do that. But your, your target is to cut that down. Yeah. If, yeah. yeah. And, 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 that, and at that point, we're changing the scope. We, we change, we changing so, the so, scope so, so, so I guess the question is, yeah, with, I'm, when I'm saying negotiate, I don't mean like just say, hey, we want the same thing for less. I mean... You break down your proposal, exactly. give us what your set of time is, how much you're for boring, exactly. what your report cost is, and then let's talk about what we can maybe reduce it. Yeah, rather than having to go all out again, I'm just wondering if that's a possibility. It, it, it is a possibility to negotiate only with the lowest bidder. And if we, if, we are, if we are changing the scope, I, I, I'd be more comfortable. Plus, I really would like a wider response. Okay. Yeah, I feel I, like I, I can do better than okay. two. I agree. It's well, worth considering. But, and if you're ne negotiating a smaller thing, then I would say no problem. But if you're negotiating that much, yeah. Yeah. is the second little guy going to say, I could have done better? Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Considering this small difference between the two, this number is a huge difference. And, and I, for context, I think what we did when this is now months, many months ago, we were probably anticipating about a day with the boring, which would have been in that 10, 12, or whatever range that we had priced. This is, they quoted it four days. And it's not surprising that it would be significantly more expensive. Um, and so we can, unfortunately, we can advertise probably, but we can then you back. Oh, well, well yeah. not advertise, just, not, or yeah, it's just, it's just sent again. Process we don't need we don't need to give them two weeks either. You know, they're the same people, um, so we can say a, a week or something. Yeah. I have a question. So you were saying that you'd like to get more, more bidders. So what do you think prevented the other people from bidding on it? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Only, only. So that these two actually gave quotes. One of them immediately said no, thank you. One of them asked for a couple questions, but then never submitted. I, I don't really know. I don't know if there's more work out there and they didn't they weren't interested in this job. I uh, I can actually ask and sure. Yeah, I guess so in in order to increase response if there's a way you know, what what we would do to do that. Yeah. I, I don't have any ideas. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kinda of surprised because I yeah. I've certainly worked personally with some of these firms. I'm surprised they didn't take a bite of the apple. Yeah. And yeah. and I, I drew from John's contacts, Christine's contacts, and Jim's contacts to make this list. If you want a bigger list, I might be able to get I would not, not, not be averse. Okay. I'm going to excuse myself. We're good for votes. Yes. Great, thanks. Thank you. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, that's true. We have to, to actually vote to end the meeting. Do we have to give you a vote? to do your next step. <laughs> no, okay. no. So we have to Sorry. vote to adjourn. That's okay. Apologies. Move to adjourn. Can I get my head? All in favor. Uh, Great. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs>